All right, so I'm outside of a 2020 Honda Civic LX. This is your base model. A dead giveaway on that is you're gonna see the hubcap covers with steel wheels behind them. If you ever see one on a lot or you're driving around, that'll be the, the first and easiest way to tell the difference. Um, this is gonna be your base model of the vehicle. So it's a two liter engine. Uh, if you're looking for the turboed engine, the 1.5, you're gonna to need to climb some models. So just something to keep in mind. Um, so two liter standard engine, it uses a CVT transmission. Uh, occasionally I get a little bit of concern about the CVT. They've been putting the CVT in every four cylinder that Honda offers for the last few years. Never had an issue, so I really don't worry too much about them. And most of the concern is from previous generation CVTs, typically in like Nissans and other vehicles. So just something to, to be aware of. Uh, you, you can see it has a black smoked grill here. Uh, you've got LED daytime running lights. Doesn't come with fog lights. You're gonna have to climb models if you want that. And you have your halogen beam headlight set up. Uh, no moonroof on this vehicle. You'd have to climb to the EX, which is two models up. Right above this is your sport model. Uh, sport model, a little bit larger wheel, deck lid spoiler, just a little bit sportier look to it. Interior is going to be much the same. Uh, so still a cloth interior, that kind of setup. So not a whole lot of differences. Uh, for most people, if you're just looking for a point A to point B vehicle, this would be a perfect vehicle for you. Uh, if you're buying this for a kiddo and you just want them to be in a vehicle that's safe and reliable, great car. Um, that's how I would describe this vehicle. If you're looking for a little bit more amenities, well then climb models. But this one has a backup camera. It has Bluetooth, power windows, power locks, power mirrors, six airbags. So a lot of standard features in the vehicle. And you're back. Um, you have got the single fold down back uh, setup. So if you want to fold it down, you've got a lock right here. You can pull and then flip it down. Uh, you can see it does have carpeted floor mats, which are sitting right here. Move those out of the way real quick and then show you, you do have a spare jack and all your accessories right here. Something I will point out, you'll see there's a funnel right here, and that's gonna come into play here in just a moment when I open the gas cap, and I'll show you uh, how that works also. So, while I'm moving up to the front, I will focus on this for a second just so you can see it. If you want more of the specs, 158 horsepower, two liter engine, four cylinder CVT, four disc brakes, that's way you have a full idea of what's going on uh, spec-wise on this car, because a lot of times I do get knocked for not putting enough specs in the video. So this way you have it. It has a 16-inch steel wheel. If you're looking to uh, move up models, you're gonna climb wheels. Uh, the next model up will jump up a wheel size and then jump back down. So general MSRP, when you include your destination, that's where you're at. Uh, and then your gas mileage on the vehicle is right here too. And then as far as your safety ratings, five-star overall crash rating. So this is connected to your door locks, which is kind of cool. So I can walk up, it's locked, no big deal. Unlock it, now I can pop it open. So I don't have to get into the car to pop this open. That funnel that I was mentioning comes into play because you have a capless gas tank, right? So when you push it in, it goes up. So if you're using a regular deal, no big deal. But if you needed to use a gas can, you need something to be able to hold that open while you pour gas into it. So that's where that funnel comes into play. What I like about this is you don't have to worry about not tightening it enough and setting off your check engine line. So it's just kind of a nice feature to know that you have available to you. Uh, so let's pop open the doors. I will show you it as a standard key setup. Uh, you know, so your lock, unlock, your trunk release, and your alarm if you want to set it off. Uh, it does come with an alarm. So if you get asked by your insurance company if you bought this car, you have one. Cloth interior, this is the black interior finish. Depending on the exterior of the car, you would either have a black, tan, or gray uh, interior. I have the seat pushed all the way back right now. Uh, and you can see there's still space back here. Um, so I can get in and sit behind myself and I'm six foot. So just to give you an idea for spacing, I wouldn't want to take necessarily like a 17 hour road trip behind me. Uh, but if we were just cruising around, going to get dinner, whatever it may be, no big deal. Uh, it is a standard setup as far as your, uh, your seat goes. So it's not a powered seat. It's on a rail system in the front as far as sliding it back and forth. And then if you need to raise or lower the seat, you can pull up to raise and press down to uh, lower the seat. So it does still raise and lower. So let's hop in and show you a couple different things. So I'm gonna crank it up here real quick. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is safety in the car. Uh, the car has six airbags, so two front, two side, two rear. Uh, the fronts are set up to where they have sensors, depending on if you're wearing your seatbelt or not, on how fast they'll open. The sides have a side occupancy a detection, so if I'm pushed up against the seat or the pillar right here, uh, it'll detect that and it won't give me whiplash reopening it. Uh, so just some cool things that the car offers. They've been doing this for some years. Other safety features are over here. So the car comes standard with Honda Sensing. This is really cool because a couple years ago you would have had to pay an extra thousand dollars to get this. Now it's just standard in the vehicle. So if you buy one, you get this, even in your base models. So let's point out what a couple of those things are. So this first one is right here. And I'm gonna make sure it's turned on with the green LED. That's your road departure mitigation. So whenever I turn it on and off, you'll see it light up here. What that is, is if I start to drift out of my lane, it will give me an audible alert and then correct me and keep me centered in my lane. So that's this button right here and you can see a car drifting out of the lane. 
Now the one above that is my collision mitigation braking system. This is always on and running unless I press and hold this and then it turns off, right? So that takes a couple seconds. So you're not gonna accidentally get in and bump that one and turn it off. Now what this feature is, is if I'm looking like I'm gonna rear in another car, first it'll give me an audible alert, then it'll flash in the dash, and then it'll actually start to apply the brakes to prevent the accident. These are great features for new drivers, which a lot of times is who you find in Civics. Um, right here is my vehicle stability assist. So this works with my traction control. Uh, in the event that I go into skid, it helps transfer power between the wheels to keep uh, the most traction I can with the vehicle. Really, the only time you'd want to turn this off is if maybe you were stuck in the mud or the ice and you wanted to spin your tires while somebody's trying to pull or push you out, that kind of thing. Other than that, I, I, don't, I don't really know of a good reason you'd want to turn that feature off. So, uh, moving on to the steering wheel, I want to show you a couple more safety features. So, on the right side are some more of the Honda sensing features. So, I'm going to press the main button to make sure it's on. When I press that, you're going to see ACC and LKS appear up here. That stands for Adaptive Cruise Control and Lane Keep Assist. So, let's start with Lane Keep Assist. That is this button right here. So when I press that button, you're gonna see these dotted lines pop on here. And what those are is they're set up to where if I am driving down the road, I have to be going over 45 miles an hour, and I can't have my windshield wipers on. So if it's raining outside, it's, to, it's set up to turn this off just to make sure uh, you're focusing on the road because the sensors won't always pick it up with the rain. Uh, but what it does is it, if I start to drift a little bit to the left or the right, it's just gonna correct for me and keep me centered. It's not jarring, it's not anything that's really overtaking, it's just real subtle. It's like if you've ever been in a car that pulls to the left or the right, that's how this feature works. Now, if I put my blinker on and I start to drift to the left, it's assuming I mean to do that and it's gonna suspend uh, the lane keep assist so that I can obviously you know, move over a lane. But if you're one of those people who doesn't use your blinker very often, you probably aren't gonna enjoy this feature. So just something to keep in mind. Now, the next one is adaptive cruise control. But I wanna talk about regular cruise control first because sometimes you get people to go, hey man, I just want a classic cruise control. I don't need all that extra. Uh, so if you press and hold this button for a couple seconds, it will switch over and say cruise mode selected. Now I am just set up on classic cruise control. So that would be your set, your cancel, your resume, your standard button features. Now if I wanna switch back to the adaptive version, I'm gonna press and hold, it'll say ACC mode selected. Now what that is, is if I am driving down the road and I set my speed, bam, right? So I'm set to 65. Uh, and then I select this button right here with the picture, which you can kind of see, it has a little bit of glare to it. But when I press it, it'll select boxes here. The more boxes, the more space it's gonna create between me and the car in front of me. Um, so what that means is if I set it to 65, the guy in front of me slows down to 55, it's gonna designate that space and slow my car down to keep that designated amount of space. So really cool feature. If you're taking a long road trip, this is awesome because you don't have to gas, brake, hit, resume, cancel, mess with anything. You just, you just go uh, and let the car do all the work for you. So that's how adaptive cruise control works. So all of those features are what make up Honda Sensing, uh, which is now standard in the vehicle. A lot of times you'll see commercials for this on television. So let's move back over to the left side of the steering wheel. Uh, your Bluetooth features are down here. So to answer a call, to hang up and use voice command, um, you know, so call so-and-so, that sort of thing. So that's what these are for. Uh, and then your information button is right here. Now your information button is gonna pull up these menus down here. Uh, and then you can toggle between them. So if you wanna switch miles, miles per hour to kilometers per hour, uh, you wanna pull up your tripometer information, you can get to that info right there. Uh, let's say you want to look at your oil life. You can absolutely check that. When it gets down to 15%, it'll give you an audible alert, uh, and then you'll show a light. Uh, and it'll even tell you a code, so that way you can check it in your manual, or you can just Google it, and it'll let you know exactly what they're going to tell you when you get to the dealership as far as recommendations. Uh, your general settings here. So vehicle settings, this is where you could go and mess with some of your door locks, your tire pressure monitoring system, uh, so some of those setups. Uh, lighting setup. Door setup is kind of the important one for most people. Like auto door lock is set to where when you hit 10 miles an hour, it automatically lock the door. So that's with vehicle speed. And you can change that to when I shift from park or turn it completely off. So I'm gonna back out of that. And we'll show you a couple other ones. Uh, your auto door unlock, right now it's set up to when I open the driver's side door, it'll then unlock the remaining doors of the car. So you can change that here too. Uh, so those are probably the most important ones just because you know people like to set up the locks in a, in a particular way for themselves. Uh, so just so you know how these features work. So you can toggle through here and look, and these were under door lock setup, right? So I'll let you play with that, but that's where you can find some of these features, maintenance info, default to all, uh, and then exit back out of that. So I'm gonna scroll over again, um, and we're back to where we started, right? So digital display that you're looking at, I like it because it's a matte finish up here, so it doesn't catch a lot of glare. So where you could see I was catching glare earlier off the steering wheel here because I have light shining behind me, look at my dash. Nice and clear and crisp because uh, it's just a good look. Uh, and it's digital, so when you turn the car on and off, it actually has a kind of a cool look when it lights up. So here, I'll show you. Uh, so when you crank the car on and off, it's just kind of cool. 
I don't know. If you're a car guy or girl, maybe that, that impresses you. If not, then <laughs> it's, maybe it's not that impressive. So I like it. Uh, over here on the side, you got your gas gauge. So that's digital too. And you'll see when you're completely full, you're not. Uh, so easy to tell right now uh, with the blue lighting that I'm completely full, right? Uh, and then you can see my light indicators and my engine temperature and things like that are right there. Uh, so uh, on the left side over here, I do have auto on off headlights. So they're set to auto right now. So I can get in and out of the car. It'll turn on and off for me. And then over here is my blinker stock as far as turning on my windshield wipers. Now in this model, it has a classic stereo setup. So classic buttons and knobs. So if you don't want much, this is a great car to be in. As far as getting to your radio, scanning around, finding the channel, setting them, real easy to do, real easy, it's classic, most people understand this. Jumping between media, so if you wanna to go to USB, you wanna go over to Bluetooth, this is where you're gonna do it, as far as audio wise. Um, connecting up a phone to the car, if you've never connected one, press that and then toggle, and you can hit yes and add a phone. Uh, and then if you need to add additional phones, you can obviously uh, back out of the screen and do it from uh, the settings and be able to jump around and hear and add to Bluetooth, right? So not hard to work through this. It's very easy to understand. It's a very classic setup. A lot of people have used stereos like this for a long time, or they can figure out because there's only so many button uh, options and then turning it completely on and off as far as your audio, all right? So easy to understand as far as this goes. A lot of people know how to use this, your dimmer, if you want to make it bright or darker, that kind of thing. Uh, your AC controls are down below. So as far as how much air, hot or cold, and then where I want that air to go, right there, right? So easy to understand and use. This is a very easy setup on this car. Uh, down below, you can see my second airbag is currently not on because there's nobody sitting in the seat to uh, set off the sensor to turn it on. So that's what this is in case you ever see it. Uh, your flashers are up above here, so to turn them on and off. Uh, down here, there's a couple buttons, and these probably get the most questions or the most, uh, they're just the most foreign to people, right? Uh, so the first one is the econ button over there. And I'm going to put my C button on so I can explain a couple of these buttons. Uh, econ button, when I press that, you're going to see a green leaf pop on up here. What it does is it shuts down some of the electrical systems in the front end of the car, affecting things like your AC unit, uh, and then of course your gas pedal as far as how fast the car will take off and go. But in doing so, you improve gas mileage by using this. So conservative drivers could turn it on, leave it there, never know the difference and get better gas mileage. More pedal to the metal, heavy footed drivers, you might want to turn this on and off as you go, but you can anytime on and off. So it, there's no like requirements. So I got to be at a stop or this or that. It's very easy to use. Brake hold button. Okay, so brake hold, I'm going to show you, but you have to have your seatbelt on. So that's why I needed to do that. So if I'm in drive and I turn the brake hold button on, first you're going to see it up here there. And then over here to the right down here, it's going to say brake hold. And then when it's actually holding, it'll say hold down there. So it's holding right now. So I have the car in drive. And I have my foot on the brake, but I'm going to take my foot off the brake and we're not moving. So what that's doing is it's holding the brake for me. Now, when I give it some gas, what it's going to do is now I'm going to start moving forward. And then again, I'm going to come to a complete stop and you're going to see brake hold is on. Now I can release my foot from the brake while the car's still in drive and it's holding the brake. So this is really good for like stop and go traffic when it's, I move eight feet and then I stop and sit there. I move another eight feet. I stop and sit there. I don't have to keep my foot pressed on the brake, the gas, the brake, the gas and wear my leg out. I can relax and just take it easy. So it's more of a convenience feature, but that's what brake hold is. Keep in mind though, you do have to have your seatbelt on. So right, right now I'm wearing my seatbelt and the car's in drive. If I take my seatbelt off, it disengages this feature, but it lets me know that it immediately turned on my parking brake. Uh, so the car's still in drive, but it turned on the parking brake so I wouldn't roll forward. So if you're in like a drive-through line and you were using this, that's where this kind of comes into what you're like, I can't reach the ATM machine. I go to take my seatbelt off. You're not going to roll into the car in front of you. It has a safety feature built in for that. So while we're talking about the parking brake, it's electronic. So to release it, put my foot on the brake, I press down, LED turns off, it is now off. To set it, I put my foot on the brake, I lift up, and it sets it. So it's just like a handbrake where you push up and down, right? So easy to understand there too. My center console, so I've got a sliding armrest right here that I can use, and then I can pop it all the way open. I've got cup holders down here. Let me turn on the light so we can see a little bit better here. Uh, and then of course I can slide those out and then I have a deeper well if I wanna go uh, with like a massive water bottle or whatever it may be, a Yeti or something of that nature. So you've got a set up here for you, uh, and then you know plenty of space back here that you can work with too. Uh, yeah, so cloth interior, uh, regular standard seats. They're not powered. You got to climb models for that. Standard mirror setup. No moonroof. You're going to have to go to an EX for that, which is uh, so LX Sport and then EX is where that would land. Um, so that is the LX model. This is a 2020 version. If you're comparing this to the 2019, uh, the similar cars, man. If there's a difference, it might be some plastics or just, you know, this is glossy versus just a matte finish. Um, but you could definitely buy a 19 and be just fine if you can find the right deal on one. Uh, you're not losing out on anything on this particular trim. 
Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You can always comment on the YouTube video. Um, if you want to call me, you can. You can reach me at 737 443 9555. But I tell most people I'm pretty good about checking the, uh, the YouTube channel pretty much every day. So I get on there, or I should say every day during the week, uh, and making sure I'm answering questions. Uh, let me know what you need. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. Please subscribe to my channel because I'm always looking for new subscribers. Uh, and let me know what you think. Thank you much.